How's it going everybody? I'm Matt Davis, founder of Final Rise. And in this video, I wanted to talk to you about our Final Rise legacy system. And in this video, I wanna do a pretty deep dive because it's really hard to show all the ins and outs and the features and explain a lot of the design concepts behind um, our vests in just a normal landing page or whatever you might see, you know, product page on our website. There's so much to these vests that it's hard to encompass that. It's hard to break that down and simplify it. And so by using long form communication, obviously shooting a video, that gives us a chance to really dive in and talk about these vests in greater depth. And hopefully it's going to help you decide if you're looking at the legacy or the summit or the sidekick, it's gonna provide enough education for you to decide what's right for you. At the end of the day, we wanna make sure we're getting you into the right vest because that's gonna make sure that you guys have the best experience in the field and that's the most important thing. So out the gate, we're gonna jump right into the legacy. And to provide a little bit of context behind the legacy, if you're wondering what the difference between the legacy and the summit might be, the legacy is a trimmed down version of our summit vest. Now, when I say trimmed down, what I mean by that is if you look at this bat, the game bag specifically, you'll notice there isn't the molly webbing throughout the entire um, vest. The shell pouches themselves are different. Um, and real, really what we were trying to accomplish there was to strip off a lot of the extra accessory compatibility for the people that don't need that. You know, the summit was designed around how I personally like to hunt. Um, we're here in Utah, do a lot of chucker hunting, uh, go to a lot of other Western states, and we're doing big hunts. We're doing all day hunts. We leave the truck in the morning and we don't come back until dark. And so being able to have a vest that has the ability to carry everything that we need is super important. First aid, water for you and multiple dogs, shells, food, emergency stuff, whatever it is, everybody's gear list is a little bit different, but obviously not everybody hunts that way. That's kind of a far end of the spectrum, if you will. And we recognize that there's a lot of people that are super hardcore hunters, but their hunting is different. You know, they're hunting little parcels here and there, 40 acres here, 50 acres there. They're doing small loops, they're coming back, they're swapping dogs. We get it. Not everybody hunts the same because we're hunting different species of birds. The habitat is different. And so having, you know, multiple vest options is hopefully allowing you guys to find the right vest for you. So one, one thing to touch on really quick is that we use both the same shoulder harnesses and the waist belt on all of our vests. Those truly are the foundation of the final rise system and two key components that really set these vests apart from anything else on the market. Really quick, the shoulder harness itself, it is a very thin, it is non-padded. In my opinion, padding is a band-aid for a poorly designed waist belt. Um, you know, padding is going to change the way that you mount your gun. It's gonna change the length of pull. To me, it doesn't make sense to go out all summer, spend a ton of, ton of time at the range, shoot, 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 shoot put on my vest, go hunting, and all of a sudden, you know, I'm getting caught on buckles, and I'm getting caught on this or that, and all of a sudden, my length of pole changes. And I, there's so many people that have echoed that same, you know, bad experience with padded shoulder harnesses. And we've used a lot of the great gear that's out there, and I'm definitely not knocking anybody that uses um, a padded shoulder harness, but in my mind, it just does not belong on an upland vest. I, I don't need that if there's other parts of my vest that are designed properly. So very minimal shoulder harness here you know this allows us to not have to offer a men's or women's um, harness simply because it's going to adapt and contour to your body um, if i throw this on here really quick you can see it's just going to lay flat no matter where it goes so even though i might be you know a, a guy or a gal whatever we're all different um, chest diameters waist diameters whatever that is this is just going to lay nice and flat and so for gals you don't need to have this S curve that brings it over here and does all this different stuff. So a lot of thought and time went into the design of the shoulder harness. And um, 
we've been super stoked with the feedback. Everybody has kind of said this is this is what they've been looking for. So um, use a couple layers of Cordura. We've got the color accents and then we use a non-slip PVC on the back. There are two accessory um, mounting points here. You can use these um, on the summit, if, which is bladder compatible. The Legacy is not. Um, you're able to run, you know, a bladder hose through there, or you're able to attach or clip on handhelds. We make a handheld pouch that clips on here. Um, lots of different options. There is a spot specifically right here below the sternum slider and, uh, excuse me, the sternum slide and these ladder locks on the bottom of the shoulder harness. There's a double stitched reinforced square right here. That's perfect for a carabiner. So lots of great options here. Quick grab handle, grab it out of your truck, you throw it on, you're ready to rock and roll. So that's really the shoulder harness. The waist belt be a little bit harder to show if we're holding that specifically. We do not use a single width waist belt. We use a bat wing style. Um, if you're familiar with a lot of the high-end hunting packs or you know mountaineering gear, you're probably very familiar with this shape and it really, it makes a huge difference. The waist belt is the very foundation of a strap vest. That's the whole design point, right? Being able to minimize the material up top and be able to put that weight on your waist and your hip. And that's the strongest part of your body. So naturally we should put as much weight there as possible. So big deal there. And that's why we use this belt and shoulder harness across the board. Another thing that is unique um, to all final rise systems is we have an integrated lumbar pad. Um, this lumbar pad, again, if you're familiar with backpacking or anything like that, this makes a difference. Um, all of us have a small void essentially right above the top of our bum and our back. If we're standing properly, you know, I have a void right here, end of my butt's here, top of my back's here. Obviously, I'm trying to stand super straight. Um, but this is helping sit in that void which is going to make sure that the waist belt cannot fall off. If there's nothing there, it can sag. And when the waist belt sags, that puts pressure on the shoulder harness. So if you ever come back to the truck after a long day, you've been successful, you killed a couple birds, it's been awesome, and <clears throat> your neck hurts or your traps hurt, it's because the weight isn't on your hips. And so really combating that with, by building a strong and well-designed foundation, that really makes all the difference. And is again, one of the reasons that we use this universally across all of our designs. So um, back to the game bag. Again, I did mention that it is a simplified version of the Summit Vest. Uh, we don't have the bungee on the back here. We do have a single zippered pocket, which is found right here in the side. I'm going to open this up, and this whole rear panel is a nice big pocket there. Easily accessible. I can access this when I have the vest on. You can reach back in there. It's great. Sides of the, of the vest, this has a sleeve right here, and it's perfect. It's going to fit the 32-ounce water bottles that we offer, or if you have a Nalgene or another bottle type that you like to use, you have the ability to add those on either side of the vest itself. Other than that, that is the game bag in a nutshell. It does also have a spot here on the back where you can use jacket lashes. So throughout the year, as you're transitioning from warm season to late season, um, you know, you're going to get out of the truck. It's going to be cool. You start hiking, it gets hot. You're not just going to drop your jacket. And I don't like putting it in the back of my game bag, especially when I'm on a road trip and I don't have access to, you know, wash my, wash my clothing. I don't want my jacket to be covered in feathers and blood and different things like that. So strapping that to the back um, is just a really, really nice solution. The sides of the game bag, we reinforce these as well as we do with the back. It makes it super easy to load a bird. If there's one feedback that we've received, a positive feedback, it's how easy it is to load a bird. And as you get older, I'm not overly... I'm not very old myself right now. Um, shoulder mobility and all those different things come into effect, right? And so just being able to reach back and load a bird, it shouldn't be a circus. You shouldn't have to be able to <laughs> do some sort of CrossFit move to be able to get in the back of your vest or call your buddy across the field and have him take it and load it in your vest. That's a thing of the past. It's, it's just a very, very 
functional and well thought out design. Really, <clears throat> the hallmark of good gear is not noticing that it's there. And you being able to just simply move and function and work and hunt and shoot normally without that gear working against you, but instead working with you and being very intuitive. Um, I, I understand what's comfortable to do. I understand how to load you know, the pockets and, and where, it's, where it's comfortable to grab those. And we'll dive into that here on the shell pockets in the front, but just loading a bird, again, I guess I'm beating a dead horse here, but it shouldn't, it's not rocket science, right? So being able to load the bird should be very, very simple. Um, if we transition to the front of the vest itself, um, we have a simplified shell pocket. We call these essentially a, a classic flip top pouch. It's held securely in place when closed with a nice hit of Velcro. You can tuck that pouch all the way down inside of itself where it's out of the way. A lot of the hunting we do out west, um, <clears throat> grouse season, we're obviously hunting thick cover, pushing a lot of brush. Come chucker season, you know, the, the tallest habitat out there are the burned cedar trees. Um, you know, the cheat grass is maybe ankle or, or shin high at most. So, um, very nice pockets, nice and deep. Um, one of the advantages and one of the specific reasons that we use uh, a deeper pocket, and I'll put this back on to kind of demonstrate and provide a nice visual for you. A vest is like a teeter-totter. And so it's very important when you're loading your vest to consider weight distribution and placement, where you're putting the heaviest things, where you're putting the lighter things, and how that's going to impact the vest throughout the day. Is the more weight you can put on your hips as you're going into the field, the, the less tension you're going to feel on that shoulder harness as you start loading birds. Now, if I put a ton of stuff on here, inevitably gravity is pulling that vest away from me, right? So that's why we've shifted these pockets and everything as high as possible, keeping those above your hips to keep that weight on here. Um, the birds have to go here and that's okay. There's a reason that these have a slight slant forward and that's to push the birds towards you. Um, if that's sagging, it's going to pull those birds away from you and that's going to put um, tension on your shoulder harness. So that's a key thing to look for when the vest is on, how level is the vest. If the back of the vest is sitting below, that means that your shoulder harness is going to have an incredible amount of unnecessary pressure. Um, and sometimes that just might be because the vest doesn't fit you um, or the torso isn't adjusted or is lengthened out too far. Um, again, you should be you should be able to have a nice little slope. Hope you, hopefully you can see that here. Um, and that's just going to keep everything very close to my body and keep that weight on my hips. So <clears throat> moving on to the shell pockets again, giving you kind of a visual here. This is going to hit me right about at my wrist, which is really nice. You know, I can get shells here if a pocket's up here, but it's so much easier. I can drop my hand in, and this is very easy. That's like reaching into my pant pocket, right? You know, the analogy I use, high pockets are like these little tiny pockets you have on the top of your jeans or whatever, and they're always kind of a pain in the butt to get into. For me, that's what these a smaller hip pouch is. I know some guys like that. I'm not knocking it, just not for me. Um, so not only in my mind does that, does that conform more naturally to human anatomy and human function and how we move, um, but it also offers a great counterbalance to the back of this vest, right? Coming back to my whole teeter-totter analogy, as you see here, the bottom of these shell pouches are a little bit lower than the bottom of the game bag. And so what that does, if you have a teeter-totter, right, and you put a heavier kid on one end and you have a lighter kid on the other, heavy kid's going to win, right? He's going to put the little kid in the air. And that can happen with the vest. If, as I'm loading lots of weight into the back of my vest, if I don't have equal weight or enough weight to offset that, my vest's going to want to rock. You guys have probably seen vests where our sternum straps all the way up here or everything's kind of just riding up or if they don't have any weight on their hips. Um, there's a couple of vests out there that are pretty popular, but I see it all the time. I see a bird in there and I see their hip pockets up, up around their chest and it's not, that's not how it's supposed to work and that's okay. Um, but anyway, so what these do is by this 
point being lower than the back of the game bag, it gives lighter weight a little bit of a head start or an advantage against weight that will be put in the back, right? So if I can start with some weight here a little bit lower, as I add weight here, it's still going to inevitably rock. But if this weight starts lower, it has to travel a greater distance before it starts putting excess tension on the shoulder harness. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm, it wasn't overly like scientific. I tried to really kind of simplify that, but it does make a huge difference. So always make sure when you're loading your vest, you're utilizing these pockets. I don't carry a lot of shells most of the time when I'm hunting. If I'm hunting covey birds, maybe chuckers or whatever, you know, I might take a box of shells. You know, our limit here in Utah is five birds. <laughs> if I can't shoot a limit of birds, you know, with 10, 15 shells on a bad day, I should probably just go back to the truck. Anyways, um, but that that's okay. So the point of what I'm saying is, is that you don't need to have a ton of gear in here, but you should have enough to offset this. The more gear again that I can put in this on my on my waist belt, the more comfortable I'm going to be in the long haul. So as I'm leaving the truck, I'll put snacks in here, I'll put a camera in here, um, call and anything that I might potentially need, an extra water bottle if I'm using the legacy. Like I'm trying to put to minimize the amount of stuff that I'm putting in the actual game bag vest itself. I'm trying to put most of that on my hips, hoping that I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna kill a couple birds, and I'm gonna be able to put those in the back and it's going to balance and carry very comfortably. So when I get back to the truck, my neck doesn't hurt, it's been a comfortable day, and I'm stoked to, to go home and you know tell stories and all that fun stuff. So anyways, that would be the legacy in a kind of a, a deep dive, if you will. Um, we do have a mesh back right here. This is huge. Anytime I see, you know, solid material here from early season to late season, that's just not going to breathe the same. Um, a couple key differences to note if you're watching this video and trying to decide, should I go with the Summit or should I go with the Legacy? Again, simplified shell pocket. Um, this legacy does not include the water bottle holsters. You can purchase those additionally. There is still a spot on the waist belt. So if you want to add those on there, you could potentially have two water bottles on your waist belt and two water bottles in the side of the game bag. So you can carry four water bottles. That's, you know, 32 ounces. You've got a hundred and what is that? 128, 128 ounces of water. It's a lot of water. Um, so even though it's not bladder compatible, you still have the ability to carry ample water if you're running multiple dogs, or if you're doing shorter hunts and you can just get away with a water bottle, just throw it in your front front pocket, keep that weight up front, load the birds in the back. If you're going back to the truck, you don't need to water the dogs or the dogs are watering at the truck or there's a creek or whatever. You know, you can kind of scale your kit accordingly. Um, but again, coming down to weight distribution and being able to put that weight in the most um, and the places that make the most sense to be able to help that balance and feel good is, is very, very important. So be conscious of that when you're loading the vest. If you got your vest, throw your gear in it. Make sure you've got even amount of weight on the right-hand side as the left-hand side, as well as in the front and in the back. So anyways, that is the Final Rise Legacy Vest. Um, this is available at finalrise.com. This is an absolute workhorse. It's a great, great setup. Um, I wore it quite a bit early season when I'm grouse hunting and I've got a lot of water for the dogs and I'm just carrying a single bottle for me or I carry a little uh, Sawyer filter that I can keep in there and I can just keep filtering water you know depending on some of the places that we hunt here in the mountains there's lots of springs and so depending on where I'm at what I'm doing I kind of again scale my kit and take the gear that's going to provide me the most optimal experience there so um, if you guys have any questions please reach out. My cell phone number is on the website. You can email us at team at finalrise.com and uh, appreciate you guys taking time to watch us and appreciate you supporting our business. So thank you so much. God bless. Take care.